Matter 1.0 was released exactly a year ago. Okay, almost exactly a year ago. But back on release date, there was no smart home devices that existed that were actually Matter certified since the specification was only just finalized. So I thought what better time than one year later to take a look at all of the Matter devices that you can actually go out and buy today and use in your smart home. And spoiler alert, I didn't find that many. A super quick recap about what Matter is if you're unfamiliar and you've never heard of it before. Matter is a smart home standard that was created by the Connectivity Standards Alliance or CSA with the goal of improving compatibility between devices of different manufacturers, which has traditionally been a pain point for the smart home industry where you have all of these different apps and services to control all of the various different devices from different brands. Matter is supposed to fix that issue in theory. First off, I wanted to clarify what I am classifying as a Matter device for the purpose of this video. And that is essentially devices that were designed for Matter or with Matter in mind. So not devices like the Akara Hub, which was originally Zigbee and then it got an update to Matter and that kind of bridges the gap between those Matter and non-Matter devices. Those are really cool and certainly very needed in the space. But we've looked at those in the past and I want to take a look at some individual Matter devices this time around. They also need to be available in the UK where I am, as, as far as I can tell the US does have a few more Matter devices than we currently have here in the UK, but these are the ones that I could actually find for sale today. The first device we have is actually one of the first Matter devices to be announced, the EVE Motion Sensor. EVE may not be a company you are familiar with unless you are a HomeKit user, as they predominantly made HomeKit devices, but with the release of Matter, that now opens up their devices to other platforms too, so you can see why they jumped on updating their devices to Matter as quick as possible. The EVE motion sensor is a PIR-based motion sensor with a quoted 9 meters of range, 120 degree field of view, and it comes with a built-in light level sensor for use within automations. It's battery operated with two AAAs, and maybe the most surprising thing is that it's IPX3 rated, making it suitable for indoor or outdoor use. Connectivity is dealt with by thread, making this a matter over thread device, and there are two different versions of this device, the HomeKit version for £40 and the Matter version for £45. I have the HomeKit version that can be upgraded to Matter through a firmware update in the EVE app, and as far as I can tell, functionality wise, they are the exact same. I added the Eve motion sensor to all five of our smart home platforms, Amazon, Google Home, HomeKit, SmartThings and Home Assistant. And while all of them showed the motion sensor, only HomeKit, Home Assistant and SmartThings were able to actually display and use the light level from the Illuminance sensor whilst it was absent from Amazon and Google Home. I also ran into a maximum limit of four connected platforms at one time with the EVE motion. Finally, I noted some discussion online a couple of months ago about an issue with the light level not working properly once the device is upgraded to Matter and also for the Matter version of the device, but I'm guessing a firmware issue has resolved this as I didn't experience it with my unit, so something to be aware of. Next up is the first ground up Matter device from Makara, their new contact sensor P2 which has got a tough act to follow in the footsteps of the legendary Zigbee original. The P2 is built on Matter over Thread and comes in at $29.99, almost double the price of its predecessor. And alongside being a contact sensor, it also has a button on the front, which Akara says is programmable, though that has not yet been implemented and will come in a future update, alongside adjustable sensitivity and tamper alarm. How those updates will arrive remains to be seen just yet. It's not clear if you will need an Akara hub for that or if the firmware can be updated through third-party hubs. Matter does have that capability as far as I know, but it's up to the manufacturer to make use of it. Time will tell. All five platforms were able to make use of the contact sensor without issue, but I did run into a three-platform limit with the P2. We have two Matter LED strips up next. The first one is the Nanoleaf Essentials light strip, which is an RGBW strip available in two or five meter lengths and can be cut at predetermined sections or even extended. It features a group of five LEDs for color, warm white and cool white at a count of 21 LEDs per meter, all of which are powered via a 15 volt adapter directly to the controller. The controller is matter over thread once again, has buttons for power, 
brightness and colour cycling and comes with pre-applied double-sided tape like the strip does. Our second LED strip is the new Govi M1 RGBIC 2 meter strip, which unlike the Nano Leaf, this one has addressable LEDs, meaning that they can all be different colours, making for some more advanced effects and scenes. Density comes in at 60 LEDs per meter on the M1, and its controller is powered by 24 volts, has buttons for power and modes, and is the first device in our list that is matter over Wi-Fi instead of matter over thread. The low 21 LEDs per meter of the Nano Leaf did have me concerned about its brightness level, especially when the Govi M1 has triple that count, and that does certainly ring true when it comes to colour only, since the single colour LEDs are spaced quite far apart in comparison to the Govis. However, if we switch over to a white colour, it does surprisingly much better because it has those little cluster of small LEDs to handle the whites, and the LEDs themselves are extremely bright. It's just the big gaps in between them that lacks uniformity. In fairness, the Nano Leaf Essentials line of products is their more budget-oriented line of products, but at £45 for a 2 meter strip, or £70 for the 5 meter version, it's not exactly the cheapest LED strip out there, though it is cheaper than the £80 I paid for the 2 meter Govi M1, which I'm not gonna lie, almost had me in tears when I had to hit that buy now button. Still think about it. One other thing to note with both of these is that with Matter, you have access to the basic functions like colour and brightness in whichever platform you choose, but Matter doesn't support advanced functions just yet, and indeed it's not clear if it ever will. This is a problem for the Nano Leaf, where in the app you can toggle scenes, which let the strip transition between different colours in a gradient style, but it is especially a big problem for the Govi, since that has individually addressable LEDs and has tons of customizations like music sync, dynamic effects, and color segments that you can only get access to by using the Govi app, something that Matter is trying to solve, so that is a little bit of a bummer. For both the Govi and Nano Leaf, three was the maximum platforms that I could get connected at one time. Our fifth device is what I believe are some of, if not the first Matter certified shades available on the market from a company called Smartwings. And I've actually been using mine for a few months now after they sent them over, and they have genuinely been such a quality of life improvement for our smart home, which I'll explain in just a second. Smartwings have shades available in lots of different motor types, including Zigbee and Z-Wave, but they have just released their Matter Over Thread shades, which is the ones that I've been using, and they also have tons of different customization options from the style to the material to the blackout level and so on. You also get the option of having an optional wireless remote and a solar panel to help keep the shades continuously charged up. These are custom fitted blinds, so you send them the dimensions of your window, pick any styles and color you want, and Smart Wings will make them up for you and send them out. So they are more of an expensive solution than something that is off the shelf, but I do think they look great. No clear price on these as it depends on your dimensions and which options you choose, but you can get a price directly on their website. These have been really great for not only the office and the hallway, but especially in our living room where we've always battled with some nosy neighbors and we used to just shut the curtains, but this means that we miss out on all of the nice sunlight and it's always dark. So instead we got some of the zebra style blinds, which means that we can set them to a position that allows a good amount of light to come in while still completely blocking outside visibility, or we can also have them fully open or closed or anywhere in between. I was only able to add the smart wings to HomeKit Smart Things, Amazon, and Home Assistant. Unfortunately, Google Home can't add this device because it's running a pre-certified version of the firmware since I've had these blinds before they became Matter certified. And Google Home just doesn't give you the option to accept it anyways, even though all four platforms say, hey, this is a pre-certified device and they just allow you to proceed. So I wasn't able to test Google Home, but you shouldn't have that issue now that they have been fully certified by Matter and all four platforms were able to control the blind up and down as well as the position, whilst only HomeKit, Home Assistant, and SmartThings were able to actually display the battery percentage. Amazon did not show it anywhere that I could find for some reason. I also ran into a device limit of three platforms for the SmartWing shades. Next, we have another matter product from Eve, the Eve Energy. Like the name suggests, this is a smart plug with energy monitoring capabilities, which we will talk about in just a second. 
Like the Eve Motion, the Eve Energy was also originally a HomeKit product using Thread, but has since been updated to Matter with a brand new version, as well as a firmware update for anyone who had the original. It's quite a bulky smart plug, but it does have an LED on top as an indicator, and it's also rated for up to 13 amps or 2900 watts here in the UK. Like the Eve Motion, it also uses Matter over Thread for communication and is available for £32 for the Matter version. All five platforms were able to make use of the basic on and off functionality of the Eve Energy, though there was a three platform limit. But once again, the problem with the Matter version of this plug is that the energy part in Eve Energy, the energy monitoring, isn't supported by Matter, meaning you don't get access to any of the energy usage stats available with the Eve Energy. You have to use the Eve app to be able to see any of that. That is made even more annoying by the fact that their app is only available on iOS and not Android since they used to be HomeKit only. All of which effectively means that this is a rather bulky and quite expensive smart plug with basic functionality until such time as Matter supports energy stats, which is quite unfortunate as this is quite a nice smart plug. Finally, we have our last device, which is another product from Nanoleaf, the Nanoleaf Matter Essentials RGBW bulb, available in both B22 and E27 style fitment. And again, like the LED strip, is a matter over thread device that can do RGB colors, as well as cool white to warm white. And it comes in at 17 pounds per bulb, although you can get them slightly cheaper in a multi-pack. Just like with the LED strip from earlier, Colours do lack in brightness, in my opinion, though I feel like that is a problem with almost every smart bulb on the market, but I'd say the whites are much more adequate, which is good as that's probably what you will use it on most of the time. Once again, I was able to connect it to all five platforms, with three being the max platform limit at any one time, and you do unfortunately lose access to any of the scenes, though I think that's less of an issue with a single bulb as opposed to an LED strip, but definitely something to be aware of that you will need to continue to use the Nanoleaf app for a more advanced control. And that's about it for this video. As always, I'll have links to any of the items featured in today's video down in the description if you are interested in picking any of them up. They do, of course, help support the channel if that's something you are interested in, and thank you so much if you do. This was an interesting one, not only to see how many Matter devices actually exist in the wild one year after its release, but also to see some of the nuances that come from setting up devices that were made from the ground up with Matter in mind, rather than devices that have been updated from Zigbee to Matter, for example. I actually ran into a lot of different things and quirks with Matter during the making of this video. I've got lots of different thoughts on that, so I'll probably do a follow-up video if you are interested. Do let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see that. Other than that, I hope you found this video useful and you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.